Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Nuclear Criticality Safety Lecture Series. Previously, we discussed several statistical methods for estimating 95-95 upper subcritical limits for C over E values. However, these methods all assume that the samples used for their statistical fits were drawn from the same population and that the samples could be weighted equally. In reality, this will almost never be true. The operation or application that we're trying to design doesn't actually exist, and so we're trying to use similar benchmark experiments to infer what C over E should be for that application. If we had already built an experiment that was completely identical to our operation, then we wouldn't need to do any statistical analysis at all. We would just use the C over E for that experiment. And so, our code validation studies generally aim to infer credible USLs for the operation or application that we're designing using a library of somewhat similar critical benchmark experiments. Some of these experiments will be more similar to our application, and some will be less similar, and so it makes sense to develop methods that weight the higher similarity benchmark C over E's more heavily. The USL stats code from Oak Ridge, which is an unofficial part of the scale code system, is a trending analysis code that uses libraries of benchmark experiments to infer 95-95 confidence intervals for some target application. USL stats offers several linear regression-based trending methods, and our goal when using the code is to use these methods to develop a linear regression trend for the C over E values of benchmark experiments as a function of some similarity parameter, which we'll call x. After we develop this trend, we can either interpolate or extrapolate the trend to estimate what the likely C over E value should be for a benchmark application. This analysis also allows us to know the bias for our application and the 95-95 confidence interval for the bias. This trending parameter, x, can be any number of things. Some of the most common trending parameters include the system's EALF, or the energy corresponding to the average lethargy of fission, which is a good metric for how fast or how thermal a system's neutron spectrum is. The system's h to x ratio is another good metric for the neutron spectrum. And again, the h to x ratio is the ratio of h atoms to all x fissile atoms. Another common metric is the fuel enrichment. And more recently, USL stats-based analyses have started to trend on more rigorous sensitivity-based metrics, such as C sub k, which is something that we'll discuss in detail in the following lectures. So the general USL stats procedure involves first grouping our benchmark experiments as a function of some possible trending parameter. We might have justification to trend on one specific suspicious parameter, but if we don't have a specific parameter in mind, then we can draw trends using multiple parameters until we find a parameter where a statistically significant trend exists. Once we have a trend, we can use that trend to interpolate or extrapolate what the C over E should be for our target application. And then we can use the magic of statistics to develop a 95-95 confidence interval for that C over E. So how do we determine that 95-95 confidence interval? Well, when we develop this confidence interval for our linear regression, we'll need to account for two sources of noise or uncertainty in our data points. S k of x represents the variance that arises from the strength of our linear regression fit, while S w represents the variance caused by uncertainty within each data point. In other words, S k of x is the variance from the spread of the data points, and S w is the variance from the uncertainty contained in each individual data point. If we were to wave a magic wand and reduce the error bars on each data point to zero, then we would reduce SW to zero. Whereas, if our data created an absolutely perfect fit with no deviation at all from the linear regression, then SK of X would approach zero. So given that N equals the number of benchmark experiments available to us, X is our trending parameter of choice, and k equals the normalized k-effective, which is just another name for the c over e value of the data, then we can use this equation to obtain the values of s k of x and s w. From here, we can combine these two variances using propagation of uncertainty to obtain the overall pooled variance of the regression fit, 
SP. Now, we won't dive into the specifics of the next steps, but once we have SP, linear regression and t-distribution statistics allow us to calculate the 95-95 confidence interval for some point x along our regression, where 1 minus gamma is the desired confidence level, which equals 0.95 for our 95-95 interval, and t of 1 minus gamma is the t-distribution p-value for the confidence level 1 minus gamma, with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. If you want to dive more into the mathematics behind this confidence interval, then recommend reading A Technique for Code Validation for Criticality Safety Calculations by Dyer, Jordan, and Kane, which developed the mathematics on which USL stats is based. So now that we have the 95-95 confidence interval, we can determine our system's USL by taking 1, adding the computational bias, which is again determined using the linear regression fit that we've developed, subtracting capital W, and subtracting our administrative and AOA margins. For conservatism, we generally assume that this W is equal to the maximum value of W of X in our linear regression fit, and this maximum value will either occur at the minimum or maximum value of X. Once we start discussing the advanced sensitivity-based similarity metrics, we we'll want to use these linear regression methods to extrapolate the bias and confidence interval to a point that lies outside of our available benchmark data. In this case, capital W will equal little w evaluated at the extrapolation point. W of x depends on an x minus x bar squared term, which is why the maximum value of W of x occurs at one of these extreme values of x. So now that we know how trending analysis works, how can we use the USL stats code to produce USL estimates? Here's a sample USL stats input shown in the scale code's fulcrum GUI. USL stats inputs start with a equals USL stats line, which tells the code that it's running the USL stats sequence. The second line is an arbitrary title card, which you can use for your own records to describe the system that you're analyzing. Next, we list USL stats parameters, which we'll discuss in detail in a minute, and lastly, we enter the benchmark data for USL stats. This benchmark data is formatted so that each benchmark provides three pieces of data. First, it provides the value of the trending parameter x for that benchmark experiment. Second, it provides the value of c over e for that benchmark experiment. And third, it provides the uncertainty in c over e for that benchmark experiment. Note that this uncertainty should include uncertainty from the benchmark evaluation's experimental measurements, and uncertainty that arises from stochastic and nuclear data uncertainty in the benchmark simulated k-effective. This triplet of data is entered once per benchmark experiments, until we use the end data line to tell the code that there is no more data to enter. So lastly, what parameters control the USL stats calculation? The p equals parameter describes p for the confidence interval, which again is the probability that a randomly sampled point will be beyond our limit. For a 95-95 confidence interval, p again equals 0.95. The 1 minus gamma parameter describes the confidence of the statistical fit. The gamma parameter is actually the significance level of the distribution's fit, which represents the false positive probability for this distribution. Alpha is the confidence level for the less commonly used USL2 method in USL stats. The sensitivity-based USL estimates all require that we extrapolate the linear regression fit to some value of x beyond the range of our data. However, the USL2 method can only be used to interpolate data points. Thus, this USL2 method is used less frequently in criticality safety trending analyses. The x-min and x-max parameters represent the minimum and maximum values of x used to develop our trend. Sometimes our linear fit becomes more clear and becomes stronger beyond some threshold of x, and in that case, we'll want to tell USL stats to omit some data points when it develops the linear regression. Some sites will create USL stats inputs using every single data point, and then downselect which points are used to develop the trend and the x-min and x-max input parameters make this process easier. However, 
I do believe that there were some bugs in earlier versions of USL stats that cause it to sometimes ignore the X-Min and X-Max inputs. So in practice, I'd recommend not using the X-Min and X-Max parameters and limiting the benchmark data that you enter to only the benchmark data that you want USL stats to use when it develops its linear regression fit. Next, the sigma parameter allows the user to specify the average standard deviation for the C over E data points instead of manually entering sigma for each point. If sigma is entered, then USL stats will use that sigma for each benchmark data point and will assume that the triplet of benchmark data is actually a doublet or a pair of data that describes only X and C over E for each benchmark. Using the sigma parameter is sometimes tricky since it changes the benchmark data that are entered. If you forgot to remove the sigma values from the triplet of data, then your entire input would be hosed. And so, I usually avoid using the sigma parameter and instead just enter the uncertainty value for each benchmark experiment. The admin margin parameter describes the administrative margin for our upper subcritical limit. If we have a delta K AOA that's specified for our application, then we can also add it into this parameter. We'll discuss one or two additional parameters that we want to use when we run USL stats using sensitivity-based trending metrics, but we'll close by discussing how to run USL stats. USL stats is actually a Java program, which means that you can open USL stats using the java-jar command. The USL stats jar file is distributed with scale, even though it's not an official part of scale, and it's usually located in the USL stats slash release folder from your main scale code directory. Here we show how to run USL stats, which really only involves opening and analyzing an input. From here, we get beautiful USL stats regressions and USL estimates. So now you have all the tools that you need to use USL stats to estimate C over E values for a target application based on a library of C over E values from benchmark experiment data. The only question left is what parameter should we use as our trending parameter? The EALF, the H to X ratio, or the fuel enrichment can all be good trending parameters but a significant fraction of the criticality safety community believes that sensitivity-based similarity metrics provide the most rigorous trending parameters. I happen to be one of the folks who believes this, and so in the following lectures, we'll dive into some more advanced methods for using sensitivity coefficients to quantify how similar a benchmark is to a target application and to estimate upper subcritical limits.